Cut. Hey, easy touch. What the heck is this? Ah! Welcome to the Whiskey Tribe. Hey. Every once in a while you get into a whiskey and it's not what you were hoping for. But is there a way yes. to fix cheap whiskey? Um, sometimes cheap whiskey isn't bad, but bad whiskey. Is there a way to fix whiskey that you don't really like yet? I'm hoping so. Remember back in the day we did that video, we talked about the most common flavors in dominant whiskey yes, categories? The, whis the whiskey word cloud. And we ended up with the word cloud. People went through the categories of whiskey and we asked them what are the most common flavors you get out of these various categories. I'll link that up here. So what would happen if like the reason you didn't like a whiskey is because it was missing some of the things you typically love right. in whiskey. What if we could add those flavors back in from the source. Things like like um, like honey, licorice, like licorice, cinnamon, uh, cinnamon. You got what is this this year? Nutmeg, wood notes. Yeah, vanilla. Yeah. I'm about to sneeze. Ah! Oh! <laughs> you thought I was going to. Huh. First things first. What's what's the whiskey that we're gonna try and fix? Improve well, upon. I. Yeah. I'm gonna start with a really cheap one. Okay. Kentucky Gentleman, which is straight whiskey blended with vodka. Bam. Kentucky freaking gentleman. Uh, yeah. You, wait, you said straight with whiskey. straight bourbon blended with vodka. All right, let's taste it. Woo right. hey, that's shiny. Does get the ethanol on the nose? Yeah, man. it does. Well, you're gonna want to get some some deeper, heavier, thicker flavors in there yeah. to overcome that. Even at 40%, you just get that pungent ethanol. Okay. Okay, that's a lot of Kentucky Gentleman. It is, I may need a little less for room to put shit in. You right. think I overfilled it? I don't know, what okay. do you need? We got stuff over here off camera we couldn't fit Look, on the I'm table. looking for, right. what? I'm looking for a little bit of brown sugar. This is really, uh, so this is a very cheap, very thin whiskey. I think it's actually really good for a good one for us to start with because so. we will definitely be able to pick out what flavors are there. They're not gonna get overwhelmed by anything that was already there. There wasn't much there to begin with. What do you think? I think we may need to blend it. No, God, no. <laughs> All right, what else? Uh, I'm thinking it's missing cinnamon. Cinnamon? Okay. <laughs> Bam. Bam. Cinnamon, Mo. Don't want to do too much cinnamon. You don't want to do too much? You got to have a light touch on the cinnamon. You don't want to do too much cinnamon? Cinnamon dominates. I don't know. I think you should have done more now, cinnamon. Now, I think I need a little bit of the woody black pepper note. Again, that's not much, man. That's not right, you gotta have a light touch, Rex. It's, it's you already, gotta have a light touch. It's already such a light whiskey, though. It's I know, looking, I know. It's looking for heft. I think for the body, we're gonna need some molasses. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That is. That's a, like motor oil. It's a, it's a thick, syrupy monster. Though. Yeah. Basically, we're, rect we're doing a rectified cocktail. Oh, that kind of smells weird. Yeah, we need a little bit of that dark chocolate to mix it up a little bit, I think. I'm gonna put a whole chocolate in there. This is why we need a the blender. blender. Oh, a cherry! You need a cherry yeah, note and good need bourbon. cherries in the bourbon. Yeah. Okay. Let's macerate the cherry. In the blender. Do you know what macerate means? Chew. And then spit it into the... Oh, masticate is to just masticate. chew. Masticate. That's right. Macerate is to shred. Masticate. Let's masticate the cherry. Or we can just squeeze Oop. it in there. And keep the pit. You just squirted your cherry squirted. It's immature. Very immature. Can't Smells believe, good. Can't believe you'd be that immature. Last, I think caramel. Caramel bits. Caramel. No, caramel. Caramel. Caramel bits. Caramel. Hey, easy, tiger. Jesus. There we go. Yeah, caramel slob. You fish them off the table. All right. You want more? I put four. I think that'll Just do it. Just four? What's the smell like? Well, I don't, I don't know. It's fighting, things are fighting for dominance. I mean, there's it's, the cherry turned out to really take over. All right, here we go. Like this, like that, and then power. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> so gonna, first we get I'm gonna the funnel it stuff. down to the middle of this. Oh, that is just. Oh, oh. It's uh, Alex, we made a mess. Tighter strain because we got big chunks out. Now we're for gonna, science. We're gonna, science we're gonna need that again, probably. I mean, it's 
Clear as day. What we started with, mm -hmm. the chunky before blend, and then this is the post blend. Okay, just on the nose. Is it an improvement? I remember that, shiny ethanol vanilla. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think honestly it's the molasses that broke it. Hold on, so you didn't you, you didn't improve? No, not on wow. the nose. It's See like what I mean? This, it's a pungent, almost a... It's the real molasses. Yeah, it's the real molasses Molasses that did is it. not the way to go. Now hold on. <gasps> That's a much more interesting flavor. <gasps> the nose is gross. I kinda like that. It's almost... You didn't add any raisins. It's almost raisiny and dark fruity. Yes! Holy crap! Heat this up? That's like mold <laughs> spiced, uh, that's wait, good! Wait, it looks gross, it smells gross, it tastes good! Yeah! It's definitely a more complex whiskey. I think it's a more enjoyable whiskey. If you, I don't, if you don't look at it, and you don't smell it. Don't do either of those things. Well, Did you know that back in the day, this is what they used to do to spirits. Okay. To make them drinkable. Like in Scotland and Ireland in the moonshine days, Oh yeah. and in England, and even in America, they would take new make spirit, yeah. and they would add all these flavors and herbs and spices to it so it'd to make be it drinkable. Basic and simple and alcohol. Yeah, it's another version of what's called rectifying a spirit. Sometimes rectifying ref in, uh, refers to uh, cleaning and purifying, okay. and sometimes it just means adding, changing, and affecting and mixing. Let's try another whiskey. Yes. What mm -hmm. What could we improve? Paul and ten young in love, girl. From Italy, goes walking. When she's walking, when she passes, goes ah. Now this was <laughs> a personal gift from Josh and Gretchen Galladay. All right. They showed up at my studio door. <laughs> it's a box with a compass on it. <laughs> what the heck is this? Box it's whiskey. whiskey in a box. Very See, rare. This is okay. limited edition. There's instructions on the bottom on how box. to open it. Uh, well, it's just a box of whatever. You know. Don't you know your way around boxed spirits, Daniel? I don't. Totally. You're too good for boxed spirits? Evidently. So you pull out the nubbin. The nubbin. <laughs> you getting on in there? Get in there. And you just reach on in there. Get the nubbin, and then it's like a box of wine. You set the nubbin down on the edge. Okay. And then you peel off the... The safety cap. Right, and that should give me a nice little pour spout All for right. my box of whiskey. Oh, right there. Looks for you, you want some for me too? Okay, why not? Oh, you know it's not that different than Kentucky Gentleman. <laughs> it's actually more nail polish alcohol. It's way more nail polishy. And it's- A little plastic. It's faking a Canadian vanilla. Yeah. It's trying to do a Canadian to vanilla, but it, the nail polish is just overwhelming. My God. Oh, it's pure vanilla. Wow. You're gonna have to add in all of the actual deep, rich notes. You know what I need to get you? It's vanilla icing with a Bernie. It's hard to get Bernie at 40% ABV. Yeah, but they do. They, they managed. pulled it off. <laughs> they yeah. managed. Okay, I'm gonna nub in some more in there. Nub in some more. Oh, yeah. All right, look at all the things you have in your, like, because what if we wanted to replicate a rye, I got some dill. Vanilla, and then I'm going nutmeg, baby. I'm going nutmeg? Nut nutmeg. Okay. I always, I wish I could find nutmeg more often in whiskeys, but when I do, it's delightful. Going think, all in. There we go. There it is. Some nutmeg. Okay. Okay. Okay, I got the nutmeg. Now, uh, honey. Sure. These are all brand spanking new. Okay. Oh wait. Yeah. Okay. We're good. That. Yeah. You had to nose it first. <laughs> make sure. Make sure it's the right kind of honey. We're good. I'm going deeper into the caramel than you. Woo! That okay. is deeper. Oh, butter. Well, you know, there's like a, sometimes a nice little in buttery Irish, note. In Irish, you get like yeah, a yeah. buttery note. Now I'm gonna need to get a little bit more sugar to get that butter. Well, I'm thinking brown sugar. Do you bring uh, your knife? I didn't bring mine. Yeah. I'm thinking brown sugar. Give me one tablespoon of butter. One tablespoon? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, there's butterscotch? I'm doing some butterscotch. All right. We're doing butterscotch. For the nuttiness, do I want the deluxe mixed nuts? Or just peanuts. Or classic peanuts. Well, I just wanted to give you options. Right. First, let's get the, the butterscotch out of the way. And people would, oh wow, this is strong. Wow, that's strong. Okay, 
Just a few. Can I just want to try one on the side? Okay. Just to see. I'm just doing a little pinch. Ooh. Butterscotch in there. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> what is this? Add the trick corn. What if you want that corn death note to remind you of the origins of bourbon? I'm not feeling the corn. All right. I'm feeling the cherry. Now stim to give it character. <laughs> and the pip. Deej, you went all in on the cherry. Yeah. Yeah, this is like okay. a Christmas spirit all, right. all of a sudden. It's going to knock the cock off of yours. It does smell really good. It smells like gin. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> That's so ginny! Yeah! How did that happen? Yeah! And then I want a little thing of mint. Just to, to give it a little nuance of... Oh, yeah. Unpitted cherries, because I'm not satisfied with cherry meat. I want cherry core. I want cherry bone. The core it's, of the cherry it's the soul! bone marrow of the cherry, which is the delicacy. That says butterscotch. The bone marrow of cherries is the delicacy all? of cherries. All right. First of all, look at that. Yeah, I'm gonna stand back. I'm just gonna... Go ahead. It's kind of fun. Don't do it. Yeah. It's like revving a car engine. All right. <laughs> Don't overfill like I did. Uh, uh, oh, wow! Oh! <laughs> oh god. Okay, that's enough. What's funny is I, this normally would be grossing me out like crazy, but what? after last week, I feel uh, like I can do anything. No, this is nothing. Is it an improvement on the original whiskey? Huh. Tastes like a liquefied cupcake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With a little bit of um, gin added. Who dialed in a bigger improvement? You and your Kentucky gentleman, me and my not so compass box. On the taste? Yeah. Me and my Kentucky gentleman. Mine is definitely more sugary. Yes. Very desserty. Yes. Very sugary. Mine still maintains a little bit of the whiskey impact. And it is, gosh, it's just weird how adding complexity <laughs> and layers of flavors. It's that dumb. Yeah. It's that simple. Speaking of last week, you, you had not the best time last week. Yeah, the sous vide thing. But there, some people had some opinions about so, our experiment. Specifically about yeah. the glass. Because mm -hmm. the reason why we put it in glass is glass is something that's not going to attribute a lot of flavor. You know why I didn't bring it up early on is because when you can things, you right. heat them up to seal them. Sure. So I figured it was probably fine. At first I thought, well, there was always air in between the whiskey and the lid. And no right. point was the lid contacting the whiskey. Right. Right? But if the rubber gasket, because I was looking right here. One tiny little ring this, of rubber. There's no film on this. Right. Right? That's, the middle is clear. That doesn't come off. But if this the rubber gasket. gasket, if this was getting hot enough to off gas, to release stuff or into the, the air. Or for the fumes coming through the air from the whiskey to interact with it and then drop back down into Maybe. it. Maybe. And I'm thinking, well, that seems eh. like a bridge too far, but then I thought about how effective it was whenever we did the whiskey smoke episode. Yeah, and it was just took a tiny amount to destroy whiskey everything. Whiskey absorbs yeah. like uh, things in the air, like yeah. a sponge. Almost it's like, like okay, milk does. All of a sudden, this is plausible. Okay. Good thought, let's follow up. Let's do another experiment. We did, again, uh, 12 hours at 172. Okay. And I did the whiskey where it seemed like we got the most extreme difference in the flavors, which was the Jameson. Right. Okay. We're going to do another blind taste test. Okay. Oh. I know which one they are. Okay, but I don't. But you don't. What did you do to change the experiment on the 12 hours? What I did was, I just put the bottle of Jameson into the, oh, into the sous vide. Well, that's fair. And uh, the footage that you guys have been looking at up to this point, this was immersed in the sous vide, 12 hours, 172. Now, you'll also notice on the bottom of this cap, this isn't perfectly metal either. It's a different kind of material. Right. There's like a foam mm. right there that you can scratch, but all right, it's different than that rubber thing. I'm gonna say this is the one that you cooked. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's a difference. Yeah. Uh, it's not near as dramatic as it was. Okay. So I think the rubber gasket people... You think they... I think they might have been right. To th today in this episode, we're going to be seeing what happens if we add foodstuffs to whiskey. Right. What happens if we add whiskey to a food? This may be the greatest gift I've ever given to the world. So this... 
is Fuji Apple. Oh, no. Sous vide, 172. Okay. 12 hours. In, that's in, that's in, all you, my friend. In rum. I don't like apples. This could be. Look, man. So did you sous vide this bag? Rum and an apple? No. You just sat it in there? No. What, what did you do? I just don't worry about it. Oh, yeah. If I like it, will you eat it? If you legitimately like it, I might try a bite. You're welcome, planet Earth. That's fantastic. It's the texture is all wrong, though. That's fantastic. You like apple pie? No. <laughs> what are like the two foods that you do like? Chicken strips. Jesus. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's not kidding. It is. <laughs> you will go to the fanciest restaurant in Austin. This asshole orders chicken strips. Huh? I gotta go to the texture first. <laughs> it's nutritious. Look at that, it's underneath the belt loop. It's nutritious. Action. It's gonna make my jeans smell like apples. And a good time. One of the weirder things that I like. Okra? Took pickled okra and you CV'd it for 172 at 12. I like pickled okra. I so do I. It's one of the weirder foods it's that I like. It's slimy, but I actually kind of dig it. What happened to texture? I don't know. It's mushier. It's not nearly as crisp. Mmm. Yeah, that's not good. Just gonna set that right there. Hello, darkness, my old friend. If I move, I'll vomit. <laughs> Here. <laughs> what do you think, Rex? It's the texture. <laughs> yeah.